is all. Thank you for being a fan of mine. Thank you for uh, supporting women's MMA. And all I really have to say is, let's go potty break fix. Why do you ask to show my feet? This is very weird, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it because it's pretty weird. Very weird, but it's cool because I've never liked my feet. But it's it's nice that some people say that my feet are, are beautiful. Shut up. Hey guys, welcome to Potty Break Picks. Uh, this week we're gonna be breaking down UFC Fight Night Dawson versus Green. Uh, we're gonna be starting with Montana De La Rosa versus JJ Aldrich to get started on the undercard. Uh, I got a little bit to say about this, but not a whole lot. Do you got anything? Um, this is a close little line fire. You can find both of them around a pick em. Uh The line's kind of moving now that I see towards the Montana De La Rosa side. Yeah. Uh, the lowest you can find her at is minus 130, which is kind of sketchy because I think this fu uh, fight is really a coin flip. Um, Montana is the younger and a taller girl with a run and reach advantage in this fight. And in my opinion, she has fought the better competition. Than JJ Aldrich, uh, coming off the loss to Tatiana Suarez and Macy Barber. Um, I don't, those girls are really good. A draw against Maya Buenasova and a loss against Oraho. And JJ Aldrich has fought Wing Na, Adriana Lipsky a loss, Aaron Blanchfield loss, Jillian Robertson win, and Demopolis win. So I think I give the slight um, competition advantage to De La Rosa here. And yep. De La Rosa, she's going to be the better finisher in this fight. She has eight submissions and one knockout, which comes out to a 75% pro finish rate. And JJ Aldridge, she's going to need, uh, or uh, Montana De La Rosa, sorry. She's going to need takedowns in this fight. Uh, I give JJ the slight advantage on the feet, actually. Now, the striking numbers are really similar but jj aldrich has better striking defense and that really matters and she has better accuracy in my opinion just yeah. from the eye test not just not looking at the numbers that's what it looks like to me yeah and striking defense is super important in wmma I agree. Uh, you, you can win fights just getting hit less to be honest um but even if the fight takes place on the feet, I don't think Montana De La Rosa is going to be a fish out of water. Like, she could win on the feet as well. It's not like J.J. Aldrich is this ominous kickboxer, you know? Like, she, she has okay hands and she's defensively sound, but she's not fucking Israel Adesanya. Like, she's not going to be... She's not, there's not going to be a huge gap on the feet. True. So, oh, I think I want to say that... Sorry, I, was, I want to say that with the striking, like the difference in the accuracy comes from the fact that J.J. Aldrich fights from the clinch where uh, a lot of her opponents aren't responding to her strikes. Like That's when true, she's, yeah. When she's standing out in the open, like it is pretty even when it comes to accuracy. It's just that you're going to be accurate when you're attached to a girl that you're kneeing, you know, and like Aldrich uh, gets those stats up because of that, I think. I think that's one of the reasons that it sways that way. Um, but what you were saying about uh, Aldrich's striking, like, is true. Like she is decent enough um and de la rosa has enough aggression that i think uh it will force jj aldrich to use the skills that uh she has to kind of neutralize that aggression like the clinch and i think aldrich will look really good in the clinch to be honest it's just that can she stay there or is she gonna get taken down uh and i, I kind of lean towards monte de la rosa taking her down I, I, she just she's really got that um edge in the competition that she's faced even if she lost to those people um, and I think she's been, shown herself as fearless, even in the fights that she was losing, to continue to try and chain tank down attempts. And uh, I, I know Aldrich is technically the fighter that's been fighting longer, even if they have similar career uh, amount of fights. Um, but she just doesn't show any like veteran tools that I'd like to see up against someone who is as aggressive as De La Rosa. Um, and like I know I faded her against Liang Na, which like I have to live with that. <laughs> <laughs> but like we were just so hyped on non like yeah. I'm 
I want to fade her again on the basis of like De La Rosa's aggression, um, but like Aldridge has shown that she has been able to deal with aggression if it's not chaining into takedowns, and I think De La Rosa has that extra X factor that's going to end up with her on top. So if you want to play it, I think De La Rosa is the way to go. Yeah, De La Rosa money line minus one thirty. I would have rather gotten it at plus one ten or whatever it was sitting at. Um, I would have at least wanted plus money on her. Mm-hmm. But that uh, that ship is uh, long gone, and minus one third, I'm not going to play it, but that would be my pick if you forced me to. True, true. Okay, moving on, we got Vanessa Demopoulos versus Kanako Murata. Do you want to start this one? Dude, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. <laughs> this is a good fight. Uh, I think that Murata uh, deserves a, a gimme fight, and I think this is a gimme fight. Uh, I will go as far to say that, like, Demopolis almost has nothing for her um, other than aggression. I think that Murata, like, has shown in earlier, like, regional fights that she struggled with aggression, but that change started to happen in the UFC where you start to see her feel more defensively sound. And, like, she was looking for counters on girls who were so much taller and so much longer than her, and she was dodging and responding. It's just their head wasn't there. Uh, and it's really frustrating for people that are that short coming in from a grappling background, like to have that confidence in the striking to respond and counter strike and like just their head not being there because she's so fucking small. And I think the huge factor that's going to play into this is that Demopolis is one of the first girls she's fought in the UFC that's the same size as her. Uh, and she actually has a little bit of a reach edge just slightly over Demopolis, um, which is surprising. Like I thought that she was shorter, but these girls are the same size. Her head's going to be there when she responds. And then obviously she has that wrestling edge, like times a hundred. Demopolis is billed as a grappler, but what she is is an aggressive boxer with not much defensive capability who ends up on the bottom and then goes for Hail Mary attempts. And Murata, I know that it looks bad because she was just submitted in her last fight by a technical submission. Um, but if anything, that makes me feel more uh, on Murata because she showed that when she's on top ground and pounding, like, She's willing to give up her fucking arm to stay there. And I know that's not a good mentality defensively, but, like, she's shown throughout her whole career that when she's on top, she can defend. And that was just a freak snap that she just tried to... uh, She tried to go into the next round with a broken arm, and the doctor had to stop it. So, uh, you know, I've got Murata by grit. I've got Murata by uh, technical skill and grappling. And then if she continues to fight the way she's fought against taller girls with Demopolis, I think she'll just finally have that click where like, oh my God, her head's actually there when I throw a counter-strike. Like, oh my God, I'm actually able to respond to her poking me in the face, you know? And like, to watch that click happen to a grappler turned partial striker is like, is going to be a really good thing to see. I think she's really going to put on a lot more confidence after this fight and turn into a really serious prospect. Yep. I agree with everything you say. Um, in my opinion, I think Demopolis is on bar best mm-hmm. in this fight. I think she's going to be on bottom the entire sure. fight. And Murata, she's kind of got like a, a position over submission grappling style. Mm-hmm. And if the submission presents itself, she'll, she'll take it, which I enjoy because sure. you are guaranteeing a win. And, you know, the number on Murata is kind of all over the place. You can uh, you can find her at like minus three twenty five, minus three seventy five. Um, I don't think you can play that straight to be honest, because it is WMMA and yeah. it it is the highest variant weight class in the highest variant sport to bet on. And maybe like a a parlay piece. We can do like a potty break picks women's only parlay. Let's go. Maybe. Let's so go. We, can, we, we just need another leg. So we, we can take that money line and do something with it. Um, I was looking at the over-unders, um, and nothing really stuck out to me, to be honest. The, uh, Demopolis, I think this goes to the decision. I think Demopolis can stay safe on bottom, actually. She's got she's got good grappling, and she's a black belt. Yeah. I think she can stay safe from Rada's mission attempts, but she's going to get out-controlled. True. True. Um, but yeah, give me Murata to close to a decision in this fight. True. That comfortability in guard for Murata is one of those factors that I think does play into a decision more than it plays into a finish. I mean, you don't really see many ground-and-pound finishes from guard. Um, yeah. So, like, 
Yeah, no, I agree. I think going to decision is probably likely, but she'll look damn good the whole time, bro. She'll this will be like a master class by Murata, in my opinion. Uh, I think this was for real a gimme. But yeah, I no, agree. that is a solid parlay piece with the other women's fights. I I could see um the last one we might have a play we can attach to, but we'll get to that. So how about uh, okay. Munoz versus Arichi Lang? Okay, so this is for my first bet of the night. I got Johnny Munoz money line, and he is sitting at a minus one ten pickem. I got him. I think I got him at plus money actually, um, plus one ten or something like that. Anyways, um, this is a grappler versus striker uh, matchup through and through. Yeah. And I think Munoz can get this down. He's going to be the bigger guy out of the two uh, gentlemen here. And you were talking about fight ready, or Long being at fight ready. I'm not entirely sure if he still is. Yeah. But that is uh, something you can hang your head on if you're on the Origin Lang side. But we haven't, honestly, we haven't seen that great improvement. Like he can just, he, like he can throw his hips and get his feet back. But I don't think he can chain wrestle. To be honest, I haven't I seen anything so that badly, proves me otherwise. And Munoz is seven and zero to the submission, while Arigi Long is one and two in his pro career to the submission. So we see Arigi Long getting sub, and we see Munoz, you know, getting the subs. Arigi yeah. Long, he's got a ton of power, dude. That's the only thing I'm afraid of in this matchup. You know, um, the uh, takedown defensive numbers though just stick out to me. He's only got a 55% takedown defense. And that's Amazing. not something you like to see if you are betting on a Chinese national to keep this on the feet. I don't think uh, I don't think a Li Jirong can find a knockout shot against Munoz. Give me Munoz money line at a pick on price. Yeah, I was gonna say Li right. Jirong has that uh, like good striker, decent enough sprawl to get you into the pro, you know, league. But as soon as yeah. you face someone who's a chain wrestler um you know it just it changes the whole game of it i think he's got that i you i was trying so hard to watch fights of this guy before he was in the ufc to try and get a read on him um but you know he looks very similar to how he looked in the ufc not much has changed um uh, at all really like you watch any of his regional fights that are really hard to get a hold of um but it's sprawling from really far away super reactable to shots he is waiting for that for sure he keeps his hands low and that's about all the defense he has. Um, and that works on, like, a regional level and, like, a uh, minor pro league. But, like, in the UFC versus someone who, like, you know, knows how to chain wrestle, it really does change things. So if you have that read on Munoz, I would go for, you know, hammering that because, like, I mean, he doesn't have it. Yeah, that's Munoz's game to get the fight down. And Arushi Long just got knocked out by Zahabi in his own stand-up. So that must be kind of demoralizing. Um, yeah, let's see how he looks. Uh, all right, moving on, we've got Bel Diana Belbita versus Carolina. Uh, fuck, dude, these Polish names. Polish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's Kavl Kavlkevich. You help me with the Chinese Kavl name. Kavlkevich. There you go. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> sounds a lot better. Um, <laughs> she is sitting at a minus one sixty favorite. Mm -hmm. I got her at minus 170, so the line came in just a tad. Yeah. Um, I'm so happy with that number. Very playable. And Belvita is sitting at a plus 140, plus 130 dog. Yep. What do you have for this? Bro, I've got a lot to say about this, man. I think that this is one of the most indicative fights of what era we are in in this division. You know, it's like we're post Joanna Rose era now, and, like, the strawweight division looks kind of tough. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, Kovalkiewicz is someone who I don't think was ever any better than, like, a great prospect, but for one reason. Like, she was more talented than everybody she fought, but it completely came to who showed up that night, like, when it came to Kovalkiewicz's corner. Like, if she decided to be aggressive, she was better than everybody. It really was impressive. Um, but then if she decided to fight how she normally fights, which is get scared by getting hit, look for a stupid clinch and then end up on the bottom going for submissions that I don't even think she's training. Like, it's like crazy to see her go for like heel hooks and shit like that. It's like, it looks like someone panicking from bottom and just going for whatever they can. 
And it's like, I she's undeniably more talented than most of the people. And I would even go as far to say she's more talented than Belbita, like pretty definitively. It's just that it's that airing question of like for that four fight loss streak that she had, uh, maybe even bigger. I think it might have even been five. Either five, way, yeah. Jesus. It was like, who would show up that night was the question. And it's like, now she's on this three fight win streak. And it's like, is she just getting weaker competition or is there an actual change? And you pointed out. I think, out, yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. So I actually think it's both. She changed camps to train with Joanna. She's getting better sparring partners and she's getting better practice in. Mm -hmm. Now, listen here, this, the, her, uh, her five fight loss streak. These are the names. Jessica Andrade. True. Before she was a bum. Michelle Watterson. Okay, she's not very good, but back then she was she's all right. She had a good record. Alexa Grasso, current champ. Zhao Nan Yan, yeah. a killer. Jessica Pena. She's all right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, those are her five losses, and honestly, like I can't really blame her. Like they kind of threw her into the blender right there. True. And then right after the Pena fight, switch camps, and now she's on a three fight win streak. So. Yeah. I think she's got the momentum in her favor uh, going against Belbita. I think she is the more skilled fighter, as you were saying. And, yeah, she's fought the way better comp. Belbita has some really bad losses. Um, she lost to Gloria De Paula, 5-4. and four. Liana Jehova, 6-3. Molly McCann. Um, yeah, she has really bad losses, whereas Carolina's losses are against, you know, former champions and current yeah. champions carolina she outvolumes most of her opponents as long as she wasn't really getting clinched up and grappled yeah and i think she just got more skills true in ksw belbita fought ariana lipsky which i think is one of her most telling fights even if it was earlier on in her career um and if you watch that fight like it's two very technical kickboxers and the difference was ariana lipsky's aggression uh, Belbito, and you'll look at all the lower end fighters that she's fought, like Molly McCann. The reason she's losing is that when they get aggressive, she does not have the defense or technical ability to get out of the way of that aggression. And Carolina has it in her. I mean, you watch that. I mean, no, I know it was a really long time ago, but that Joanna fight with Carolina, and like when she turned it on, she was beating Joanna. It's actually really impressive to watch. Uh, so like. I feel the same way with Belbita, where it's like, if Carolina turns it on, like, she wins this full, like, she might even get a KO, in my opinion. Like, Belbita's that susceptible to aggression. I mean, again, with the McCann fight being a great indicator of that, like, just raw aggression does beat her. Um, and it's like, and Kovalkiewicz has the skills. It's just, if Kovalkiewicz gets hit and she does her go in for a clinch with no intention of turning it into anything, and then ending up on bottom, going for really silly submissions. Like, I could see her throwing this. I mean, it's women's MMA, so, like, this might be her women's MMA parlay, bro. I, I honestly think Kovalkiewicz might be a good... So uh, you think Kovalkiewicz with... Um, what's her name? Uh, <laughs> Murata okay. is a yeah. good parlay. Okay. I, think, I think that might be a good play, yeah. Yeah, and I will say Kovalkiewicz... Kovalkiewicz... <laughs> I'm, okay. Her, on her uh, five fight lo five fight loss streak, her three decisions were they were pretty close, dude. Yeah. They, they she wasn't getting her ass beat the whole time. We will say that. True. Okay, I'll I'll give you that. That is true. All right. Uh, kick us off for that next fight. I'm gonna pull up the odds on that parlay in the meantime. Okay. Cool. <laughs> We've got Eon. Kutalava versus no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. the next fight. Algio versus Alexander Hernandez. Oh, I was so ready, bro. <laughs> no, dude. I had him out of order. Yeah, I, uh, right. Let me. I, I know you didn't look into this fight too much, but um. Yeah, yeah. Kind of tell me what you like out of Alexander Hernandez. Dude, this the top of this card is just yoked, yoked white boys bringing it, bro. <laughs> Dude, first round yoked white boys, dude. That's the whole main card, bro. It's actually sick. Uh, Alexander Hernandez obviously comes out swinging, uh, fucking legit. He looks bad when he faces more technical fighters and like even vets that he shouldn't have lost to. You know, like that some of his most defining fights were the ones that he lost. Um, but 
he's still scary. Like, he's still a scary motherfucker when he shows up. And, like, that first round against someone that fights like Hernandez is super scary. Um, uh, I don't have a read on Algio, and that's why I'm going to hand it over to Sam a little bit on that one because I, I don't have much for this fight. Okay, so I pulled up the odds for the WMMA Friday of the Week. Let's go. We got um, Carolina and uh, Kanaka money line that comes out to plus 106. So we're actually getting plus money on that. I, don't, I definitely don't mind it, to be honest. Not bad at all, bro. If, if you want to juice it up, you could do both by decision, or you could do uh, Carolina by decision and then Kanaka Murata by sub or decision and probably get a nice Ooh. plus money number on it that that second one sounded a lot better yeah um all right anyways going into bill algio alex fernandez this fight is so hard to predict but i think i have a very good read on it um put up the odds here we got alexander hernandez Sitting around a slight dog around minus one or uh, plus one twenty, plus one fifteen. I played Bill Algio at pl- or uh, minus one thirty. Okay, you can still get him around that number. I think the line is getting uh, a little bit wider. Alex Hernandez, he's going to be a live dog in this fight for sure. I think he's actually the better technical fighter. I think he's got better technique. And he's a better fighter skill for skill. Um, but we have seen Alex Fernandez slow down in his recent fights. And he kind of looks for a way out later in the fights. Um, and I think Bill Algio is going to show him the door. Bill Algio, he's the opposite. He's as tough as they come. And he has amazing cardio. He, this guy does not slow down. He puts on a fucking crazy pace. And then you can put him in bad spots. Like, people that take his back or whatever. And he'll just... He'll keep coming, dude. He he does not stop. He has an engine that does not stop. And, yeah, give me the pace of Bill Algio and the striking output. Um, and what's interesting in this fight is he is getting taken down, which obviously Alex is going to try and do here. Yeah. But he's kind of, like, out-dogging his opponents on the mat. I love to see it, and He's ending up on top. He's standing up every time he gets taken down. Yeah. And he can find a way to reverse the, pitch, uh, the position a lot of the times. And he also has seven submissions to his name. So I could see a, th- a third round submission by yeah. Bill Algeo in this fight. But I played the money line. I'm going to wait um, to see what the round props get put out at. Yeah. I might play a round two and a round three on Bill Algeo, to Not be bad. honest. On top of my uh, Bill Algeo money line at minus 130. Yeah, give me Bill Algeo on this one. All right, moving on, we got Felipe Lenz versus Ayn Kudurada. What do you have? <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, another one where I don't have a big read on the opponent, but I do have the yoked up white boy, bro. Ian Kutalaba, dude, is so spooky, man. And, like, I just love the way that he fights, bro. Uh, you had a pretty crazy play that you put me on to with the uh, the point deduction. You want to talk about that, bro? Yeah, so Iron <laughs> Kudalaba, all, all of his fights are weird. Something happens, something goes down. Why not a point deduction in this fight? I love it. Either Felipe Lenz or Kudalaba, I could see some eye pokes going on, some dirty nut shots. Something, something's going to go down. Strikes in the back of the head. We actually saw that last week. I I cashed a pretty crazy bet nice. last week. Um, or two weeks ago, I should say, true, at true. this point. Um, so we had Brian Battle Moneyline. That hit pretty, pretty, uh, pretty free on that one. But I had... Um... Oh, I'm forgetting his name now. Not a point deduction? Here, I can check uh, all... Yeah, ch- check the check the card for last week. But I also had a... No, uh, not for the point deduction, but the guy that got DQ'd. Uh, let me see, let me see. Oh, uh, Malkoon versus uh, Brundage. Yep, Malkoon. I had Cody Brundage to win my first round. Solid. Finish. He was getting his ass beat the whole fight. <laughs> I, had that, I had that prop... Um, I forgot what I had it at. I think it was, I had to be in the, yeah, it was like plus 1500 or something. Yeah. 
and he was getting his ass beat. The guy was on top, and he hit him in the back of the head and got disqualified. So it got rolled as a bondage uh, KO one, and we cashed that ticket. I also had Dan Ige to win against oh. uh, Bryce Mitchell. I think you could have scored it for Dan Ige, but the judges got it right. I just didn't like how they scored one of the or one of the judges scored at 30-27 for yeah. Bryce Mitchell. When you had a little doctor get called into the first round to check his eye. How, if damage is the number one criteria, right. how, how how do you give that round to Dan Ige or uh, Bryce Mitchell? And then we had Mateusz Gamrat in the main event at plus money. That came in the sweat free, obviously, because uh, Fiziv uh, broke his knee. Yeah. Weird anyway, story. yeah, short little recap for whatever reason. I don't know why I went on the recap at the. Anyway, so to talk about this fight, we got um. I think Felipe Lenz is pu- kind of putting it all together. Mm-hmm. We've kind of seen flashes of brilliance from Felipe Lenz and bits and pieces, but he's putting it all together ever since he moved down to light heavyweight. Yeah. And. I just don't like the cardio from Ivan Kudarava, man. It is awful. And he, he, he's atrocious on the mat. Like, if you're getting subbed to Johnny Walker, you should you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> and that's why I'm taking Felipe Lenz plus 125 in this fight. Not a whole... I don't have a whole lot written up for him, but I just... I feel like the trajectories of the careers... I think Felipe Lenz is kind of putting it all together. He's on a, a three-fight win streak as well. Yeah. But you never know, man. Ian Kudalaba, he's so hard to predict. Right. He's either going to come out seeing red, starching his opponents, or he's going to look like a complete bum. You just don't know well, what the, you're going to get with this guy. The craziest thing with Ian Kudalaba is, like, he'll look good by the end of the first round still cardio-wise, and something about him sitting down and standing back up, it's like round two all of a sudden. It's fucking crazy. Like, he'll be like, solid, I look good. He'll sit down, and then he'll stand up for the second round, and it looks like he's washed, bro. It's fucking crazy. I don't know what's going on in his corner, but yeah. him sitting down is the worst decision. They should just keep him standing because something crazy happens, bro. But otherwise, I mean, these are good predictions. I, I like this card a lot better than the one we had two weeks ago. Uh, it's going to be watchable. It's, it doesn't have a lot of star name on it, but like, I think one of the through lines is like, who's coming with the aggression and who and who isn't across like all of these fights. Like, a lot of these people can win on pure aggression, um, and it's just whether or not they show up and have that kind of confidence. Um, so that's a lot of my plays, at least. Yep. Um, we'll see you guys next week for Potty Break Picks. Uh, we'll have another episode out Tuesday. Uh, tune into us. Also, follow us on TikTok and nice. Twitter. We're going to be posting a lot more on our social medias. Let's go. We got good content and betting content, to be honest, uh, on the way. So give us a follow, and we'll see you guys next time. All right, cool. Thanks for watching.